The landlady notified the police, and upon entering the house, they found Reese's remains completely burned into ash with just one leg remaining. Hello, everyone. We're back. It's a one on one. It's me and Bailey. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, good. You're not in. Well, for the audio listeners, you won't know this, but. Uh, visuals you're not in a cupboard anymore i'm not i have my own space i'm in an office and i can move it's nice nice the chair can move freely i can move freely my knees don't get cramp here in the wall which is nice excellent that's great news excellent um right so paranormal stuff um so what i did with scott is i asked him you know, what are his beliefs and things like that. So I'll do the same for you. But before I do that, I want to pick up where I left off last week when I did a solo pod, right? Because okay. I think that you might have an interesting answer. You might not at all. Um, to a question that was asked on the Gmails, Ooh. stories at gmail.com if you want to ask us any paranormal questions or if you have any paranormal experiences because basically i'm sure there is potentially a logical explanation to this but i just don't know right but you're a little bit more i don't know how to you i don't know you just you just know things you know what i mean just know things you know like how things work like drills and that anyway (laughs) right so this is brian okay uh and he sent in this email i live in a house where i grew up and mum lived as a widow for 37 years i moved back in as a part-time carer until she died in 2017 one of her hobbies was collecting porcelain thimbles and there was probably several hundred in wooden frames around the walls in the room i'm sitting in right now One morning, several months after her passing, I came into this room to find one of the thimbles had fallen out of the frame onto the chair beneath. The frame itself had not moved, and the thimble had literally exploded. One fragment was left in its place in the frame, and it remains there to this day, and there were two pieces on the chair. I would love to know an explanation for this event. I couldn't think of anything. Obviously, the paranormal... Is it your mum trying to send you, a, 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 you know, a, a sign or a signal? Was there any significance of that particular thimble? Or was there a fluctuation in temperature? Maybe the sun cast a beam on the window, yeah. which magnified it and it exploded. Uh, maybe there was some dust that pulled it off, but then there's a fragment of it on the frame. And so basically I tried to answer this alone. Um, and I'd love to know if you have any right. thoughts on how a thimble could have just exploded by itself. So it, it exploded in the frame rather than falling out on the floor and then exploding. It must have done because there's still a fragment in the frame on the wall. Unless it fell out, hit a chair, which you'd think would be cushioned, hit a chair, and then a fragment somehow flicked back up onto the slot where it was originally. Oh, yeah, that seems very likely of doing that um i don't really know to be honest um just trying to think how it would just explode i mean it? my thought process was because it was so hard for me to explain it yeah rationally in any way could be a little bit paranormal couldn't it could be i mean it all depends on how they're in the frame i guess like what are they what are they held like mounted on in the frame like was there any damage to it previously was there like a small crack in it etc and then maybe doors closing could make it move on its little mount and then maybe make it explode if it vibrates through like the walls when the doors closing maybe Jeez. it all depends on how it's mounted in the frame yeah so like if it was just like sitting on a shelf and it exploded there's no pressure on any part of it yeah if there's no like fractures in it then there's no weak points for it to shatter from. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's very weird. It's, it, do you know what this actually reminds me of, which is pretty mental? Yeah. And such a 
bit of a left turn. Um, the story of uh, Mary Reeser. Mary Reeser. The woman in 1951 who spontaneously combusted. Nice. Have you heard about this? No, I haven't. It's pretty mad. Um, so on, on the 2nd of July, 1951, Mary Reeser, a 67-year-old woman, was found burned to death in her house after her landlady realised that the house's doorknob was unusually warm. The landlady notified the police, and upon entering the house, they found Reese's remains completely burned into ash with just one leg remaining. Right? The right. pictures are pretty uh, gnarly. It's it's just it's just like a pile of ash, it, right? And um, so her body literally disintegrated, which Crazy. is insane. Which is insane. And there's just no there's no explanation for it. I mean, this article is so long, but I kind of want to read a bit of it. Do you want yeah. to hear it? Yeah, go for it. Um, so before sinking into the overstuffed easy chair in the middle of her St. Petersburg apartment, a widow named Mary Reese slipped into a nightgown and popped two sleeping pills. Hot summer air drifted through the open windows. It was around 9 p.m. on July the 1st, 1951. Reese's only son, Dr. Richard Reese Jr., had just kissed her goodbye after a visit. She was alone for the night and decided to enjoy a cigarette before bed. Wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Reese, 67, would not be seen alive again. When the landlady, Pansy Carpenter... Pansy? Pansy? P-A-N-S-Y. Is that Pansy? Pansy. 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 That is, that, I mean, that is a name that has died out. Yeah, I think you're I taking on a new meaning. Uh, yeah, you don't see many pansies being born anymore. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, Pansy tried to deliver a telegram the next morning. The door to Reese's small apartment on 1200 Cherry Street, northeast, was warm to the, and and the handle too hot to touch. Inside the charred walls, embers still crackled. So, I mean, immediately you got to think, cigarette, fell asleep, yeah. in the chair, oh. up she goes, right? Yeah. But apparently that wasn't the case. Firefighters burst into a soot and smoke-filled apartment. Risa was gone, and only a pile of black ashes remained. Amid the rubble, police found coil springs from the chair and part of Risa's backbone. Her left foot sat in the pile, still wearing a black silk slipper. Her skull, reports say, had shrunken to the size of a cup. Firefighters found evidence of extreme heat, Bare candle wicks towered above puddles of melted wax. Smudges of smoke had stained the tops of the walls. Warped electric switches lined the room. Lower down, the walls were clean and the electric switch had looked normal. Reese's newspaper sat untouched. The sheets on her bed were still white. Reese's story is perhaps the strangest unsolved mystery in Tampa Bay history. The case had been documented in magazine articles, documentaries and books, but questions still remain. How could a woman go up in flames without the rest of the room burning? What could have killed Mary Reese? So before we carry on, any ideas? So basically, her chair... Her little yeah. bit, gone, melted to a point where her fucking bones are disintegrating. That's, in, that's and insane. And yet the hate. rest of the room is fine. Her bed sheets are still white. Right. Okay. Um, first of all, I just want to bring out the point of the measurement, like the unit of measurement, the size of a cup. <laughs> it's very, very broad. Uh, yeah. Now, what yeah. are we talking? Like a teacup? I actually, I, I don't know. It just is the size of a cup. That's nuts. All right, so okay, let's let's think about this. So the point the point of ignition would be obviously where the chair was because that was the hottest point, right? Yeah. So obviously, where whatever started the fire, it started in the chair. Yes. But fire spreads so fucking quickly. Yeah. Like so quickly anything like i mean I've, I've had a house i've experienced a house where i've seen the damage of which a house fire can like what it can do so like in my one for example like my this was like 2008 my mum and dad had this like old proper you know the, the old tvs like with a big old back on it 
Yeah. They had one of them sitting on a on a um like a mount on the wall and that was melted and dripped down. Oh but the God. bed the fire started in the bedroom at the back of the house and their bedroom was at the front of the house. My the fire burned through that wall into my bedroom. It's like burning shit up in there. So the fact that it only but what so it started in the chair, went to what? insane temperatures and then just went out. I th- I mean I think and we're going to probably get to it in this article, Tampa Bay Times. But I think the theory is that it wasn't the cigarette or the chair. It was actually right. her uh, that spontaneously yeah. combusted. Yeah, I mean, that I have heard of that before. Like, people spontaneously combusting. But then I didn't know if that was, like, in fiction or if I've heard it in, like, a real case before. I don't know, but... So the fire just... I don't understand if the fire just went out then because surely it must have. Let's have a look. So Mary Reese and her husband, Dr. Reese Sr., hailed from Columbia, PA. A few years after her husband died, she moved to St. Petersburg to be near her son and granddaughters. Reese loved her family, needlepoint and entertaining. But Florida was too hot for her liking and she missed her friends back in Pennsylvania. Her son could tell she was upset about it on the last day he saw her. She had been too worried about taking a trip back home to eat supper. The pills she took before he left were the only thing in her system. No one quite knew what to make of the case, but there were plenty of ideas. Maybe the blaze was an accident. Maybe it was a lightning strike. Maybe one Times reader proposed in 1951, Risa died of spontaneous human combustion. This last theory was the one that spread furthest. Soon the cinder woman mystery of St. Petersburg made national headlines. St. Petersburg Police Chief J.R. Reichart received hundreds of theories from amateur detectives. Some claimed that they smelled a strange odour outside of Reese's home. Theorists blamed uh, everything from the fabric of the chair cushion to napalm, phosphorus and thermite bombs. Where's she in napalm from? She's like, I fucking hate St. Petersburg. Napalm strike. Just on my chair. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Concentrated, precise napalm. But but, but not as concentrated as a lightning strike coming apparently through the window and hitting the chair. Yeah. Everything else is fine, just the chair got fucked. (laughs) Uh, A ball of fire came through the open window and hit her. Read one letter. I've seen it happen. So someone saw a ball of fire. Someone's casting a fireball. There was no clever answer. Sorry, no clear answer. Don't think there were many clever ones either. So Rykart drafted a letter to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Dear Mr. J. Edgar Hoover, he wrote, the fire is too puzzling for the small town force to handle. Police sent boxes of evidence to the FBI laboratory in D.C., including portions of the apartment rug, smoke samples, rubble from the walls, and floor and segments of the chair. FBI agents spent three weeks examining Reese's mysterious disappearance. They took it seriously. Yeah. They went to the fucking FBI. Three weeks and investigated it for as well. Yeah. That's wild. That's that's pretty nuts. Um, Finally, on August the 8th, Reichart released a statement to the media calling it the most unusual case I've seen during my almost 25 years of police work in the city of St. Petersburg. FBI agents found no evidence that suggested lightning had struck Risa or the building. All of the fuses in the apartment were still intact, and investigators hadn't been able to detect substances that could have started a blaze. Common combustible fluids and accelerants such as alcohol, gasoline, etc. would probably be consumed in such a fire and no trace of them detected afterwards, read Reichardt's statement. As for spontaneous combustion, the investigation has ruled that out as well. It's possible that Risa, drowsy from the sleeping pills she took, dozed off in her chair while smoking her evening cigarette. The nightgown she was wearing at the time of her death was made of rayon acetate and could have caught fire from the cigarette ash. Risa had weighed about 170 pounds. Human fat could have fed a fire that smouldered throughout the evening, allowing hot air and smoke to rise to the top of the room. Mary was a great smoker. Ernestine Risa, Mary Risa's daughter-in-law, told St. Petersburg's Times in 1991. The cigarette dropped to her lap. Her fat was the fuel that kept... That's disgusting. The cigarette dropped to her lap. Her fat was the fuel that kept her burning. 
The floor was cement and the chair was by itself. There was nothing around her to burn. Investigators decided this kind of accidental death was the most plausible theory, but Wilton M. Krogman, an anthropologist from the University of Pennsylvania, disagreed. Instead of shrinking, Reese's skull should have exploded, he said. Ooh. Then there was the cremation of the body, which would have required several thousand degrees yeah, say, over the course like, of several hours. Yeah, isn't it like over 3,000 degrees or something that it would take to make a human body go to, like, ash? Yeah. I swear it's over, like, 3,000 degrees or something stupid like that. And... I don't. I don't think that regular fires from nineties burn that hot. To be honest, no. I'm not sure. I'm Absolutely not really too not. sure. I mean, I don't know what this rayon acetate material is, but even so, it's fucking hell. I mean, if it burns voice. that hot, don't make fucking clothes out. Yeah, of it. it's probably just some sort of like synthetic material, isn't it? Like yeah, like nylon. I don't know. Yeah, like sort of like a nylon sort of thing, I guess. So yeah several thousand degrees over the course of several hours is what it would take i cannot conceive of such complete cremation without more burning in the apartment it's now been yeah. nearly 70 years since reese's mysterious death to this day no one knows for sure what happened we may never have answers after the fbi investigation trailed off a portion of reese's ashes were buried next to her husband in pennsylvania the rest stayed with her offspring Reese's family once told St. Petersburg Times they used to feel her presence, at least up until they got rid of her old furniture. That's Grandma again, they used to say when a breeze rolled by. Don't worry, she's nice. There we go. A little bit of paranormal at the end there as well. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I just, I, I mean, that was a hell of a tangent, but that just reminded me that the, the thimble reminded me. But yeah, what do you think about that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? I, yeah, no, I, I literally have no idea. I mean, I'm not being funny. Like, 70 years, did you say, it's been ongoing for? I don't yeah. really think we're going to cook it in 10 minutes. But no. Yeah. Give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's gnarly. I have no idea how how it could even burn for that long at that temperature. Isn't it? Yeah. Ma maybe, I don't know. There's just, there's just no logical explanations. Aliens yeah, vaporized like her. I'm not being funny Reagan. as well, but they're saying like the fat was the only thing to keep the fuel going. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Yeah. Ah, um, nah, it's just rank me. <laughs> like, yeah, that's not nice. Could you imagine the smell? Uh, imagine the smell, you bitch. Uh, uh, someone's barbecuing. Oh, Jesus oh. Christ. Uh, that'd be, that'd uh, be horrendous. Um, but yeah, yeah, anyway, little tangent for the combustible woman. Pretty there mad. In the comments, what do you guys think? Um, right, anyway. Paranormal. Paranormal. So, we won't retread for the millionth time the mirror at Ancient the Ram mirror. Inn, okay? So, aside from that, unless you knew the mirror happened, you'll hear it. Yeah. If you go through our podcast, you'll hear it at some point. I can't go over it again, Okay. Other than that, paranormal. When, when did you take an interest? Not necessarily believe. When did you take an interest? And then let everyone know what is your level of belief. When did I take? That's a really good question. When did I take like interest in it? Because it depends. Was it like interest as in like I want to find out for myself, or just is paranormal in general? Because I've been watching. Like horror films ever since like I was I don't know like 14 or something 13 14 I've always been really interested in like the paranormal horror films rather than the you know like the slashes or the yeah. like yeah I've always thought that the paranormal horror films were a lot more entertaining and held a lot more fear factor for it and so I started like really enjoying them and then when it comes to like investigating shit I don't really know it just kind of happened, did it? Like, yeah. It's just, yeah. Do you want to do that? Yeah, well, let's give it a go. Oh, yeah, it's fun. I, I actually can't even remember now how Daring Woods came about. No idea. Literally, no idea. I think you said you were going to do it, and he's like, "Do you want to? Do you want to come?" I was like, "Yeah, go on in." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that was it. 
men oh, okay. men you know, yeah. from there. Oh yeah, that. So so you've always kind of had an interest. Yeah. Do you believe there is something on the other side? It's tricky because one one part of me is saying like yes because of family stories that I've heard, experiences that we've had as well. Mm. And then the other part of me is saying no because it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So the logical side of me is thinking like there, there can't be because it just I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. Uh, some things you can't deny what you what you've heard and seen and been told on something. So it's tricky. What are some... I'd like to think more than not after like our experiences together and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of the family experiences you're referring to? So I don't know if I've mentioned it on here before. Um but I remember my mum telling me once when I think it was shortly after her dad passed, um, she was in the garden hanging out, washing on the whirly gig, and then looked back at our back door and literally saw her dad standing in the back door as clear as day. Like it wasn't sort of like a hazy image. It literally looked like he was standing there full form, like yes. how he would if he was just there. And she yeah. swears blind by it. Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the point? Why was she why would she make yeah, what, it up? What was you know your achieve? Yeah. yeah. And she says she said to me when she was when she was pregnant with me that she distinctively remembers like a blue orb floating at the bottom of her bed before she went into labour and she didn't had no idea what that was either. And it was kind of like she didn't she didn't she swears it wasn't a dream, that it was just right. kind of there and it didn't feel like negative energy. It kind of just felt like a warmth sort of someone's kind of like just looking over. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, sort of like a I don't know, yeah, just someone being nosy, just checking in. That's it. Well, that's what she said it felt like. That's so interesting. Let's have yeah. a, I, I, I just had to instantly Google what seeing yeah. what seeing a blue orb means. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> okay. So apparently, it's visitation of an angel or a spirit guide. Oh. Many believe uh, that a blue orb is an angel or a spirit guide sharing a spiritual omen, communication, or guidance. Spirit guides may take the shape of an orb since it requires less energy output there you go. than a full-bodied apparition. Blue that orb. Sense. Yeah. Um. The energy is of love, positive trust, calmness, compassion, and reassurance. Yeah. Oh. There you go. I didn't know that. Did you know that? <laughs> I had no idea. There you go. The blue orb may serve as encouragement and a sign you are not alone. When you see a blue orb, the message is usually positive, supportive, and reassuring. Hmm. That's crazy. That's Which it. aligns with kind yeah. of your mum's experience. Yeah. She also told me another um, uh, something that happened after her dad passed. I don't know if I told this on the body, either, so if I have, I apologise. But um, she she remembers being in bed and waking up to the smell of like tobacco smoke. Right. And my mum and dad never smoked, like ever. And uh, she was she woke up by this insanely strong sense of tobacco, and she said she went downstairs, following the smell, and there was a pile of ash on the arm of the sofa like a pipe rather than a cigarette like rather than a cigarette and apparently my granddad used to smoke a pipe so yeah was... she thought yeah physical ash <laughs> and there's no the reason whatsoever no 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 that's another story she's told me as well that's crazy yeah I was like yeah he changed shit but she swears she swears blind by it she said there was physical ash on the arm of the chair and the smell of tobacco the smell like so when people smell things and that like sometimes that can be like you know your senses playing tricks on you you yeah. want to smell that etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. um but physical ash mm. yeah. when no one in the house smokes no. and that's just that's in that's that's crazy but then, like speaking of smells as well like this would have been i think this probably would have been about maybe five months after my dad passed we was you know, 
we was all just sort of like reminiscing over memories and stuff, sort of trying to lift spirits. Mm. And we all, I can't remember what brought it up or what was said, but this, she said something about his aftershave or whatever. And me, my mum and my sisters all kind of like perked up and looked at each other because we could smell his aftershave like clear as day as if someone just squared it in front of you. And all yeah. of us smelled that exactly the same time. We was all like, what the fuck? Like, that was, yeah, it's, it's it's really strange. Like, things like that, sort of like, hey, yeah, you're, you're talking about it, your brain thinks of a memory, and you can sort of remember smells. It kind of can bring back, but it was just so vivid and strong. Yeah. It's like, it could, there's no way that it could have been, like, a memory of a smell. Yeah. All of us smelled it exactly the same time, and it was so fresh. And it was like, what the fuck? That was so weird. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's that is pretty crazy. And so, because <clears throat> to, to describe it is like not faint, but like you say, like someone's actually sprayed yeah. it there right in front of you. Literally, yeah. It was it was so strong. It was literally like because we were kind of just sitting on like quite we we've been quite close proximities of each other, but it was like yeah. someone had like the bottle in the in the middle and just like straight up in the middle, and it was just like that. It was so weird. So what what do you think that could have been? I've no idea, to be honest. I mean, I'd like to think it was sort of like, um, oh, you know, yeah, you're talking about me. I am still here. Yeah. This is me yeah. telling you that I'm still around or whatever. That's the, that's the nice idea of it. But more the more logical thought of it is just because you're, you're thinking about it and it triggers a memory. And that memory is attached to a smell, and you can smell it. Yeah, that's what I, that's what it probably was, but it just it was so strong. Mm. So it does make you think, doesn't it? Yeah. So, what other experiences have you had? Would you say either with us or or outside of the the team? Um, kind of think this, this kind of made you think like hang on a minute you know yeah. i mean this is this is like i i can't really remember much of my childhood like before 2008 it sounds really weird but like as a really young child i can't really remember much of of beforehand so i can't really recall any memories from it but um the only other like experience that i've had personally would have been like with with you guys on the investigation and that so yeah obviously you've got the mirror obviously yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we brought out the mirror yeah, um, yeah, yeah you know the countless stuff with the um the estes method that we've had is just mm. you know wild communications and yeah yeah just you know that the i think the one that stands the most out to me was the asylum after yeah. the ouija board because no, that was yeah. like that was very early doors doing like the, what we do yeah and that was sort of like a, a that was the first proper oh shit moment you know what i mean like yeah. this uh this may be a bad idea <laughs> yeah yeah definitely especially yeah. getting out getting out yeah. and just hearing all that shit it's just fucking mental oh sorry it was tragic mate <laughs> just like get out of the window we need to leave and because obviously the the window is lined with broken glass, so you yeah. can't like rush. But you just being in oh man, just being in that building and it being dead fucking silent, dead fucking silent. Yeah, we finished the Ouija board and it's just fucking creaks, bangs, the fucking lot that seem to be following us, not just from yeah. one corner of the building. Yeah, I mean it could have been someone in there. It could have been. It could but have quite easily been. The timing was was impeccable. Like, yeah, that's impeccable. it. You you wait until we finish a fucking Ouija board to to start yeah. kicking off. But yeah, no, that was a big. And then obviously, you know, they say, you know, you do Ouija boards. One of the one of the sort of like things that can sometimes happen is you know a string of bad luck. Well, fucking hell you know we think oh do we go back to the car and go home or do we go over the road to the pub 
and just debrief and we decided to do that and literally within two minutes if that minute, literally if a that. minute and a half someone's getting fucking glassed the pub's going into lockdown because the guy has been booted out and is trying to fucking cave the door in to get back in to attack people and you just think well i mean this could be considered bad luck couldn't it do you remember walking back to the car afterwards and we were oh, just we looking down the trail of blood and stuff yeah, the trail of blood leading back to the car Jeez. It's like fucking hell. This guy could just be like, obviously, like realistically thinking, he like he weren't gonna be there. He's not gonna yeah. be after us. It's like he could be around any one of these corners. He literally, yeah, so scary. And I actually, yeah. I felt for you because although I know you, you, I'm sure you were fine. There's a lot of like country roads and stuff to get to where we were, and obviously you had to drive back by yourself in the dark. Oh mate, on I those had country roads. Was it about a two hour drive? of a concert featuring me it was a great drive home <laughs> nice that's it yeah it was good fun yeah but now that was a, that was a great investigation that was that was uh yeah. that was that really was something really did enjoy that one um so to the future mm -hmm. um i did reveal last week that we will be heading to a location I haven't revealed where um but we've got one penciled in haven't we for we do. it should probably be actually be around the time this comes out um but one that we do have fully booked in i can't remember the date obviously we won't give us the, the the date away on here but for 30 east drive so 30 east drive is there anything that you want to do differently when we go back is there anything that you want to do again what are your ex not expectations but is you know what, what what are your thoughts with going back to 30 east drive um i'm i'm really looking forward to going back to 30 east drive one because we need to fucking check that door yeah and top to bottom all over yeah you know we need to really go through that and also as much as i don't want to i want to get back in that fucking coal shed mate yeah because i had some wild shit going on in that coal shed actually like no, I think that's actually and... that's actually a very underrated um moment really both yeah. both the breathing on the back of your neck and the um the like voice anomaly yeah fuck me like there's no reason for it to have done no. that i think we need to do like um a dedicated segment of that room alone right yeah. like yeah other than uh Oh, we'll just do an Estus and then we'll do this and that. I think we need to do literally everything that we do in, in that, that room. room. Yeah. Just to, just to see. I mean, obviously, you know, it, it's quite small, so it would have to be like a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing going on in there. Yeah. But I think it needs to be done because there there was definitely something creepy going on in that room, mate. Yeah, the coal shed is absolutely fine. And there's a little bit of history, isn't there, as well? Yeah. With that coal shed. So, Yeah. Creepy, creepy stuff. I can't wait to go out to 30 East Drive. Well, you guys can uh, enjoy a little solo in there as well. Yeah. 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 And are we allowed in the attic? We are, aren't we? We just didn't. No, I think we, we posted yeah, the camera Yeah, we stuck up. the camera up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see if I we think, can get I up think, there. I think we was unsure if we had permission, so we thought we'd just stick the camera up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just a hatch in it above the, the landing, so yeah. it was sketchy getting up there yeah health and safety definitely have rules against it but yeah for <laughs> we sure. will try yeah no absolutely yeah and i'm really i am really looking forward to going back to 30s drive i think it's gonna be fantastic so yes 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 right okay well these one-on-ones are shorter episodes <laughs> i i aim for the 30 minute mark uh we're, at, we're about 35 when everything's said and done but yeah bailey thank you so much for joining no as always um and sharing your experiences and, and your beliefs so overall out of 10 okay. right zero being absolute load of shite 10 being i want that 10 being i 1000 percent believe where are you on the and then we'll, we'll end with that it's such a cop-out answer but i'm gonna say like a five mate like i'm yeah, you're off in the on the fence about it because yeah, like I said, I've had experiences and stories told to me that, 
you can't explain, but then the logical side of me is thinking, can't really be real, do you know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to say 50 50 on that one. 50 50. Okay, there we go. Right, guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the podcast, you can by becoming a patron on patreon.com forward slash duty rhino for just as little as a pound a month. Share the pod around. We'll be back soon with another podcast every Wednesday, 7 p.m. If you're listening or watching. Um, and we'll be back with another investigation very soon as well. See you later, guys.